So if you zoom in on the engine right here, you'll notice that you can see on the crankcase, it is DH212, some stars, and a serial number. And that is where you know that it is a Ducar manufactured engine. Wait a second, I'm looking at the Tilton 212E again. Oops. The Ducar 212cc Hemi engine versus the Predator 212cc Hemi engine. So we just pulled these two guys off of the dyno and some interesting results coming off of them. Bink, same oil, same fuel, same operator, same dyno, same day, sort of the same time. They were back to back. I'm gonna take the pressure off show you that this one here is stock out of box with throttle stop screw taken back. Hopefully we can see this. It's going to get up to about 5,000 RPM. So we're hanging right at 5,000 RPM. And the horsepower, when I put pressure on here, the horsepower is a little bit higher than the, the last Predator Hemi that I tested. So I did change the gasoline. Always got to use the same gasoline per engine. I'm going to put the Dakar 212 on here, and I'm going to do side-by-side -side comparison. Same operator, same dyno, same weather, same day, different engine, same gas, and we're going to see side-by-side -side what the two engines do. All of my comparisons so far have had two compared results. One is straight out of the box, and then the other one is with the throttle stop screw pulled back. The 3600. 52, 5300 RPM max. I know, I know, I'm just holding back and just drawing it out. You really want the dyno results. This Dakar 212cc engine is actually very similar to the Tillotson 212E. What I'm going to say is running these engines on the dyno, the biggest difference that I saw between the two was that the Dakar engine had a really massively surging governor system. And I could feel it just pulling back, pulling my hand back when I was on the throttle. Okay, an interesting clip to just splice in here because I'm in this lovely poncho. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below. When I was editing the video, turns out I only read half of the dyno numbers. Let's go over the dyno numbers because most of the people want those, not just the parts breakdown afterwards. The Predator engine, right out of the box, was 6.8 horsepower at 3,000 RPM with a max of 3,600 RPM. When I pulled the throttle stop screw back, it was 7.4 horsepower at 3,520 RPM with a max of 5,000 RPM. The Ducar engine, right out of the box, was a little puzzling because it was about 7.85 horsepower at 3,600 RPM, almost as though that there wasn't even a throttle stop screw to begin with. When I pulled the throttle stop screw back, I hit a 7.9 horsepower at 3,650 RPM. So there really wasn't much difference when I pulled that throttle stop screw back. The surging on the governor with zero load applied whatsoever started at 4,600 RPM. When I applied load, I could feel the governor pulling back around 51, 5,200 RPM. The website specifically says that out of the box, you're probably gonna have to work on tuning the governor, and that may be for car regulation, or delete that governor. Because we're backyard style up in this house, right? This engine is built. It is specifically made for racing. So I would say that the biggest two differences between these two engines, even though this one's 0.5 horsepower more, the sticker on the side, right here. 212 cc kart racing engine. This engine is for competition use only. Aside from making an engine that is very specifically for power and performance, what else is gonna be with the Dakar engine? Well, the Dakar engine is brought in by Dino Cams. Dino Cams has, and always will, continue to give back to our sport through sponsorships and giveaways. This engine was meant to go on some sort of industrial ditch pump this engine was meant for speed and racing. Now when it comes to price, this engine right over here, the Duke car, comes at about $175 plus shipping. Bink, whereas the Predator 212cc engine at the making of this video was $140 plus gas plus tax. Now let's go over this 
flywheel exploding myth. Because this seems to be floating around the internet right now. Has anyone actually ever seen one of the flywheels blow up from the Predator engine? The little magnet on the flywheel is held in place with a little screw and some glue. This one is cast aluminum. Screw and glue, cast aluminum. The flywheel is rated for 17,000 RPMs. The flywheel on this one is pretty much don't take off the governor, don't do the zip tie trick. So great thing with the Dakar 212cc engine is you can add an additional kill switch. You can see I pulled the wires out here for the oil sensor. And instead of pulling off the oil sensor and plugging into that, has an additional one right off. But a lot of people do actually unplug the oil sensor as well. From a height perspective, the Dakar does have a little bit taller profile to it. The Predator engine appears to have a spark arrestor on the inside, not just a grate over the engine muffler itself, which is pretty good for some of the environmental issues if you're going to be going into forest area. On the carburetors, we've got an adjustable fuel air screw. On the Predator, not so much. I pulled the covers off the air box, and I pulled the little uh, bit of foam over the top of the air filters themselves. So you can see that we've got pleated filters on each one of them. You can see that the filter, however, the surface area on the outside for the Predator Hemi engine versus the Dakar Hemi engine, you can have a little bit more volume from surface, surface area. Then you have on the air box, you have two chutes coming up, bringing in airflow. On the Hemi, you've got a tiny hole in the back, and you're going to have a little bit of room in the front for that air to come up. One of the great things about the Dakar 212 is that if you're running in less dusty areas, you can actually cut it off from here to here and get a little bit of an improved airflow. I wouldn't recommend that, though, if you're going to be running in dustier tracks, dustier areas. And here is your big money ticket. You can see these flywheels are quite a bit different. Getting a Predator engine flywheel is going to cost you about $70 or more. Why spend the money on an extra one if you don't have to? This little magnet here is held on with screw and glue. And at a certain RPM, sometimes that just fatigues. This magnet is machined into the flywheel. Now port matching on your gaskets, your headers, your intakes, it's actually a pretty easy thing to do to shave that interior out, but stock without any changes on here. I've noticed that the Predator engine has about a 0 0.02 difference, larger size for both of the ports. If you look at the exhaust here and here, you may notice that the exhaust on the Predator engine is actually a little bit larger, and the same thing goes for the intake side. If you have a threaded puller, you can actually use a threaded puller on the PVL flywheel. The Predator engine is going to be a little tricky to get off. Now we're getting to the meat and taters of everything, right? The internals. Let's clear this off a little bit, focus on one part very quickly at a time. Let's focus first on the crankcase. Taking a look at the crankcases here, there isn't going to be much on the internals that you can notice as different, but the Dakar engine does seem to surge a lot more than the Predator engine did. The Dakar has a lot more reinforcement structure on the top and this back plate, whereas the Predator is falling short. And sometimes the Predator engines, when they have too much power and pressure, they pop right along this edge right here. Moving the crankcase now to the front, and there really isn't going to be much difference with the front either. They use the same gaskets, a little bit different structural support in the bottom, but again, it's this part here and this part here that you're really taking your primary focus on. Both cylinders measured in at 69.96 millimeters. Camshaft, you can tell that there really isn't much difference one to the other. Between the two connecting rods, they're both stamped LY. The connecting rod between the two engines, as you can see, I can have the wrist pin fit into one, but the Predator engine and the Dakar wrist pins are not interchangeable. And this really means that your piston and your wrist pin are not going to be interchangeable. The crankshafts are going to be a little bit different. You have a different taper here, so they fit different flywheels. And you're going to have a different taper up here where they're going to be fitting into the crankcase themselves. The tolerance for the crank crankshaft up here is actually 30.01 millimeters, whereas the Predator is 30.20 millimeters. Taking a look at our two pistons, the Predator Hemi has that flat top piston that it is known for by quite a few people, and the Dakar has a dished piston as well as room for a, a valve. Hemi is hemispherical head. 
And that means that the valves do not seat in there straight up and down. They're actually coming in together at an angle. With a non-hemi head, the valves go straight up and down. Sizes for the valves, the Predator has a 25 millimeter exhaust with a 27 millimeter intake. The Dukar has a 27 millimeter intake, the same, but a 24 millimeter exhaust. And they're a bit closer together. You can see the shape in here, hopefully, is a little bit more pronounced than the Predator's hemispherical shape. Uh, the valves, the ends stick out more on the Dukar engine. And this actually makes it a little bit difficult in order to take the head off. If you are doing any head work, you have to take the rockers off. You have to take the little clips, you have to take the pins off for the rockers, and then remove the rocker completely, set it aside to be able to get at the bolt to remove the head. You can tell that the valve springs on the Dakar engine are just absolutely of the higher quality. Crankcase covers between the two. I mean, the gasket is a direct fit for both of them. Same size gasket. Really, the supports are a little bit different. What's surprising, there's one more support in the Predator engine that the Dukar does not have. But you can notice that the Dukar supports on here are a little bit more chunky than that of the Predator. They may cut short a little bit. They're not gonna be as thick. They don't come out all the way to the edge. The Dukar does look like it's a little bit better build quality. Parts for all three engines that are mentioned are very easy and accessible to find. You can get them online. A lot of parts are labeled Hemi or non-Hemi and Predator, and they'll specifically tell you which one to build with. And then the Dakar and the Tilts, and you can find online pretty easily. They're gonna be listed out. So the Dakar has some benefits straight off the line that the Predator doesn't necessarily have. The Predator engine does have some benefits of its own. One, it costs less. Two, you can pick the thing up and then just start playing around with it. Three, So yeah, and then there's the Dakar engine. And also the 212E from Tillotson, which it's not a secret or it's not an industry secret that's being kept from you. The Tillotson 212E is almost the same as the Dakar 212 engine. There are some differences, however, the flywheel's different, the carburetor's different, the, uh, the exhaust has some different gratings on it, and the uh, pull start cover is a different design. I bought this Dakar 212cc engine at childishconcepts.com. Dynocams does a great job doing things and bringing things in for the industry. It's something that I recommend that you go check it out. Go ahead and check out childishconcepts.com. I am not sponsored by them, but I love getting all of the help from Childish Concepts. You can see that company is growing. It's really awesome. You should go check them out. I hope you enjoyed the video. And you know what? I hope you, I hope you have a great day. I'm going to dub some like exit music in here. So it doesn't look like that I'm just dancing to nothing. But I'm really just dancing to nothing. I got to work on getting some copyright free music. And the helmet's off. You can never have too much fun. Unless it makes you poop yourself. Ah! Ah, ah, ah!